Hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you today. I want to welcome you to this broadcast for our Wednesday, January the 26th, Date Night with Jesus. We welcome you to our Bible Boot Camp, our basic training in spiritual warfare. We thank God for each one of you both now and those who will listen in the future. We also thank God for the messages that were given by my daughters Joy and Amber tonight. As always, they minister each week, not only on our date nights, but at each Sunday service. Joy's message was how uh, uh, was entitled Good from Romans 8, 28. Joy ministered on how the extravagant love of God is good and how God causes all things to work together for our good and that he takes all the undesirable stress in our lives and causes them to work together for our good. Then Amber's message was on God sees us. God sees us from Genesis 16, 17, where David, where God reveals himself to Hagar as El Rohi. God revealed himself to Hagar as El Rohi, the God who sees us. God saw Hagar's mistreatment, and he will also see and help us. Both of the messages that each one of them shared was really a blessing to our heart and a great encouragement to our faith. Last week, here in our Bible boot camp, we were exhorted by God to stand our ground using our mouth as one of the weapons of our warfare. We looked at Proverbs 18 and verse 21 that says that death and life are in the power of the tongue, and, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. We were exhorted and encouraged by God, who wants us to know and to be so very aware that, his, that the words that we speak... And, and his words have created power in our lives. That his words, as we speak them, and our words have created power. Glory to God. Now tonight in this boot camp, in this basic training in spiritual warfare, we're being encouraged by God to stay in the praising zone. Because we may be just one praise away from our victory. Again, I'm going to say that again. God wants us to stay in in the praising zone because we may be just one praise away from our victory whatever it is that we're standing for just one praise away we've been covering 10 of the weapons of our warfare now remember that there may be more and are more than 10 but we've been covering 10 of the weapons of our warfare and today we will be looking at praise and worship as one of the weapons of our warfare this weapon of praise and worship is important, just like the other nine that we've been covering. Remember that we covered uh, first that the name of Jesus Christ is one of the weapons of our warfare. Hallelujah, because Jesus has been given a name above every name, that at his name, he said of things, everything of things in the heaven and the earth and under the earth should bow its knee to the name of Jesus. And then we looked at the blood of Jesus Christ. That the blood of Jesus still works. Revelations 12, 11 says, We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their t our testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. Then we see that the word, the thirdly, the word of God, which is the sword of the Spirit, is another weapon in Ephesians 6, 17. We see that the prayer of agreement is, is one of the weapons of our warfare. That if just two of us shall agree on earth as touching, that anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Some of the old, old older saints of God said, we got a double team up on the enemy. And that we do need a soldier buddy. We need a soldier buddy, a prayer partner, because there's power in united prayer. Deuteronomy 32 and verse 30 says, one could put a thousand to flight, but two could put 10,000. Joshua 23 and verse 10 says, one could put a thousand to flight, two can put 10,000. Glory to God. So remember, the prayer of agreement is one of the weapons of our warfare. Fifthly, we see that we looked at intercession in other tongues because the Holy Spirit in Romans 8, 26, 826 says that he knoweth how to pray through us. He knows how to pray exactly what needs to be prayed. So intercession in other tongues is one of the very important weapons of our warfare. We've covered these in the times past, and we go into each one a little bit more in depth. 
The sixth weapon we saw was the sowing of a special seed. The Lord says as long as the earth remains, there will always be seed time and there will be harvest. And when we sow a special seed, that seed can be the seed that will turn the tide and cause a quick reversal of situations. In Acts 10 and verse 4, Cornelius was one, Cornelius was one who prayed and gave of his money, of his alms. And as a result of that, not only was Cornelius saved, but his whole household. Then we saw our seventh weapon is the prayer with fasting in Mark 9, 29, that there's some things that only come out by prayer and by fasting. Glory to God. And we saw that in Mark 9 and verse 29. Then we saw that the canopy of God's glory is a defense and a protection. It's a weapon that is a defense and a protection around us. We saw where that man was in the jungle, and he was an uh, evangelist or missionary in the jungle. And there were all these huge mosquitoes, and he prayed, and the Lord told him to pray the canopy of God's glory, his glory, that his glory would be a defense and as a protection around him. That's what I pray over my family each day and over myself. I said, Lord, I thank you for the canopy of your glory being a defense and a protection not only over myself, but all of my children, their mates and their children. Hallelujah. Over my spiritual and my God children, over my mom and over each one of my brothers and sisters, their mates, their children and their mates, every uncle and aunt, niece, nephew, every cousin, both near and both far. I pray the canopy of God's glory over each one of us, our homes, our cars, our vehicles, our neighborhood, our city, hallelujah, our country as, the, as, a, as a defense and protection around each one of us. So that eighth one was the canopy of God's glory. And as I said before, the ninth one we looked at last week, our mouth is a special weapon. Proverbs 18, 21, that says, Death and life is in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And that we can trap things, it says in Proverbs 6, 2, with our mouth. We can trap good things, and we can trap bad things. And then today we're going to cover the uh, tenth one, which is worship and praise, in Second Chronicles 20 and verse 22. And because it says, when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which will come against Judah, and they were smitten. So let's take a little while to go into Second Chronicles 20 and look at the circumstances behind it, because we want to stay in the praising zone. And remember, beloved, you may be just one praise away from your victory, hallelujah, in Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Let's go to Second Chronicles, the 20th chapter. It says, It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria. And behold, they be in Azah, Zana Tamar, which is in Jedi. And the verse 3 says, And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven? And rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thy hand is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee? Art not thou our God, who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and gavest it to the seed of Abraham thy friend forever? And they dwelt therein, and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, If when evil come upon us as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house, and in thy presence for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help. And now behold, 
Verse 10 says, The children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. Verse 12 says, O our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mattaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. Hallelujah. And verse 15 said, And he said, Hearken ye all Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou king Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Verse 16, Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and you shall find them at the end of the brook, before the wilderness of Jeruel, verse 17 says, You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand you still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And verse 18 says, And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Verse 19, And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. Verse 20, And they rose early in the morning. And went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of holiness. And as they went out before the army, and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, when they began to sing, verse 22 says, And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And against Moab. Hold on one second. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Pardon me. And as they began, in verse 22 says, And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. In the NIV Bible, it says, And as they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who were invading Judah, and they were defeated. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked into the multitude, and behold, they were dead. There were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. And when Jehoshaphat and as people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And they were there three days in gathering of the spoil. It was so much. And on the fourth day they assembled themselves in the valley of Baraka, for there they blessed the Lord. Therefore the name of the same place was called the Valley of Baraka unto this day. One translation says of that verse 26, that on the fourth day everyone came together in Baraka Valley and sang praises to the Lord. That's why that place was called Praise Valley. Then they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem and Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them to go again to Jerusalem with joy. For the Lord had made them to rejoice over 
their enemies. Remember that worship and praise is one of the weapons of our warfare. As they began to praise and as they began to worship the Lord, the Lord sat in bushments and they began to come against each other and were defeated. We must stay in the praising zone. Remember, we may just be one praise away from our victory in Jesus Christ. Glory to God. So as we remember that worship and praise is one of the powerful weapons of our warfare, we want to know and understand that in the word of God, there is not just one word for praise, but there are at least 10 significant words, Hebrew words for praise, and they all come with an appropriate action and attitude. Glory to God. The first one we'll look at is Shabbat, S-H-A-B-A-C-H, and it's from Psalms 145 and verse 4. It expresses confidence in God's ability. How can we praise him? We want to express confidence in God's ability. Psalms 145 and verse 4 says, One generation shall praise, or Shabbat in a loud tone. They shall praise. It's a, Shabbat is when you, you, in a loud tone, specifically loud, when we Shabbat and praise the works of of God to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. That's to shout praise. The Lord is good. We see that all, often we say God is good all the time and then we have that chorus and all the time God is good is to worship God and praise him. Hallelujah. In a loud voice. That's when you shabak him. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of glory. And then the second word for praise that we want to look at today is to barak him. Psalms 95 and verse 6 says, 6 says, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. Barak is when you begin to kneel and to bow down before the Lord and to bless his holy name. Glory to God. So when it said, Let us kneel, it means let us barak him. Let us kneel and bless the Lord our God. Hallelujah. Because if praise and worship is one of the weapons of our warfare, we need to know how to use that weapon of worship and praise. We shout praises and confidence unto God. Hallelujah. It's really an expression of our faith and trust in God. Hallelujah. Lord, you got this, Lord. You got this, Lord God. Hallelujah. I bow before you, surrendering myself. Hallelujah to you, Lord God. Resting in you, Lord God. God, I bow before you. Glory to God. Then the third one is, the first one, remember, was Shabbat. The next one was Barak. The third one is Yadah. Hallelujah. Psalms 9 and verse 1 says, I will praise thee. I will lift up, hallelujah. I will lift up my hands in gratitude to thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous works. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yadah is the extended hand expresses gratitude, thankfulness, and surrender unto God. I will praise thee. It means I'm going to die thee. It means I'm going to lift up my hands in gratitude to thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. Yadah appears about 111 times in the Bible, and it means to revere or worship with extended hands, to acknowledge Praise or give thanks to lift up our hands unto the Lord. Hallelujah. I lift my hands to thee, Lord God. I worship thee in the beauty of your holiness. Somebody said it's like a little child standing before their parents with their hands extended. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is our source from whom all blessings flow, and we adore him. Hallelujah. We revere and worship him with extended hands. We acknowledge and praise or give thanks. We lift our hands to him. That is why when we worship God and praise him, we feel the urge to raise our hands and lift them to him. It's just something about it. Even though no one has had ever maybe even taught us about these things, our spirits and bodies naturally know how to respond to God in pray in praise. You'll look at someone and immediately you'll see that hand go up. Hallelujah. I often say that sometimes I'll lift my hand and it'll just go up when I, I worship God. It'll just go up. And then there'll be somebody that'll try to give me a high five. I'm saying, no, I'm not. I'm not trying to get a high five here. I'm worshiping the Lord. I'm giving praise and glory unto our God. 
And then uh, just know that that word yada comes from two words. It comes from two Hebrew root words, yad, Y-A-D, which means the open hands posture of power, and uh, A-H, or Yah, from God's name, Jehovah. Basically, Yada is responding to God by lifting our hands in praise. And then we come to even uh, to the next one, the fourth one, Tada, from Psalms 50 and verse 23. It says, Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me, and to him that ordereth his conversation aright will I show the salvation of God. That word who offereth praise, praise is the, is the Hebrew word for praise for tada, T-O-W-D-A-H. T-O-W, it says, the raised hand, it expresses adoration. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. That's that one when you begin to lift your hands and raise your hands in adoration unto God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So that word in Psalm 50 and verse 23 would read this way. Whoso offereth praise, whoso offereth to die, who extends his hand in praise and thanksgiving and adoration unto God. Glory to God. Then our fifth one is Taka. T-A-Q-A from Psalms 47 and verse 1. It says, oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. That word to ka is to clap our hands, hallelujah, and express our joy and, and in admiration and love for God. Hallelujah, glory to God. Clap your hands. That's another way, hallelujah. Then the sixth one is hallel, hallelujah, from Psalms 150 and verse 6 which says, glory, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. It means to hallel the Lord. Now this one is something because to hallel means to celebrate extravagantly. Hallelujah comes from the root word of with hallel in it. It means praise, hala, which is H-A-L-A, to Yah, J-A-H. Hallelujah. It's the highest praise. Glory to God. It expresses joy, jubilation, and celebration of the God, the God of gods, King of kings, and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. We hallel you, Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. And then the next word, the seventh word we're looking at is Tehillah, Psalms 33 and verse 1, singing scripture to instruct and encourage. It's to rejoice in the Lord. The scripture in Psalms 33 and verse 1 says, rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise, that word used there is Tehillah, for praise is calmly for the upright. It means to sing joyfully to the Lord, making melody in our heart to the Lord. Hallelujah. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him, to sing hallelujah and make melody unto the Lord. That's number seven. And then number eight, and God lives in the praises of his people. That Tehillah word, he lives in the Tehillah. He lives in the praises of his people. Glory to God. And will manifest himself as we worship and praise him. Then in number eight is the Tefillah. Tefillah, T-E-P-H-I-L-L-A-H, from Psalms 39 and verse 12. And it's the prayer often sung as intercession and petition, intercession, supplication, or hymn. It says, hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear unto my cry. Hold not thy peace at my tears, for I am a stranger with thee, and a sojourner as all my fathers were. So it said, hear my prayer. That word prayer is tefillah. It's a song of prayer and praise unto the Lord our God. Tefillah, number eight. And then number nine is Kara, K-A-R-A. -A. That's from 2 Samuel 6 and verse 14. And Kara means to dance. 2 Samuel 6, 14 says, David danced. He kara before the Lord with all his might. It expresses joy and celebration as unto the Lord. You're celebrating God himself. 2 Samuel 6 and verse 16 
after he had danced unto the Lord and, and danced even out of his clothes. Glory to God. His wife, Michael, they, which was Saul's daughter, was looking down at him. In 2 Samuel 6, 16, it says, And as the ark of the Lord was entering the city of David, Saul's daughter, Michael, looked down from a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. And she despised him in her heart. Do you know that there are people who will despise you when you begin to dance before the Lord, when you begin to barack and allow him, when you begin to shabak him? Do you know that there are people who will get angry and despise you from their heart well that's what Michael's that's what David's wife did Michael did that and so when he got home he was coming home to bless his family to bless his wife the word of God says in 2 Samuel 6 20 through 22 David went home so he could ask the Lord to bless his family but Saul's daughter Michael went out and started yelling at him you were really great today, she said. You acted like a dirty old man, dancing around half naked in front of your servant slave girls. And David said in verse 21, The Lord didn't choose your father or anyone else in your family to be the leader of his people. The Lord chose me, and I was celebrating in honor of him. I'll show you just how great I can be. I'll even be disgusting to myself. But those slave girls you talked about will still honor me. And the word of God said in verse 23, Michael never had any children by David. Never had any children. Michael never had any children, it says. So we can see that David danced before the Lord. Hallelujah. He carad before the Lord. Kara, K-A-R-A. Hallelujah. And then the last one that we're going to go over is Zamar. Zamar, Z-A-M-A-R. It says, Zamar means to touch the strings or parts of a musical instrument. That is, play upon it, to make music accompanied by the voice. Hence, to celebrate in song and in music. It's translated in the King's James Bible as, as give praise, sing forth praise, psalms. It means to sing, to praise, to make music before the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Psalm 7 and verse 17 says, I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness, and will sing praise, that word is Zamar there, to play an instrument, to make music, to celebrate in song, and music to the name of the Lord Most High, bringing in a holy atmosphere. We're going to make music before the Lord. Zamar, I'm sorry, Psalm 7 and verse 17 says, I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness, and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. And so when we begin to say Mar, we're playing an instrument or making music to celebrate in song and music, bringing in a holy atmosphere before the Lord. Now, as we close tonight, let us remember that worship and praise is one of the weapons of our warfare that will cause circumstances and situations to change in our lives. We see that there are many words to use uh, in order for us to, to uh, that are, are been translated, glory to God, in, as praise words. I'm sorry, hallelujah, that there are 10 words, and there are more than that, I have to say that again, that there are 10, more than 10 words, but we're looking at 10 of the words, 10 of the significant words for praise, and that they all come with an appropriate action and an appropriate attitude. So let us remember as we close tonight, hallelujah, that we may be just one praise away from causing circumstances and situations to change in our lives. Let me say that again. Let us remember that worship and praise is one of the weapons of our warfare that will cause circumstances and situations to change in our lives. Remember that we can shabak to the Lord, shouting and expressing our trust and confidence in Him. We can barak to the Lord, bowing down and kneeling before the Lord our Maker. We can yada to the Lord, extending our hands and arms in gratitude and thankfulness to God for his good and for his goodness. We can ta-da, raising our hand and express our adoration to God. We can ta -ka, we can clap our hands and express our joy and victory in Jesus Christ. We can hallel, giving God the highest praise, hallelujah, and celebrate our God extravagantly. We can tehillah, singing scripture and praise and worship to our God. We can tefillah, again, singing in prayer, often singing 
king in his intercession and petition. We can Kara, as David did, who danced before the Lord with all his might, expressing our joy as we celebrate the Lord. And then we can Zamar by playing music on strings or parts of a musical instrument, bringing in a holy atmosphere. So we thank God tonight. We thank him for his word. We thank the Lord tonight, even now, and worship him in the beauty of his holiness. As we end this date night tonight, if you've not given your heart and life to Jesus Christ, if you're not saved or born again, if you've not been enlisted into the army of the Lord, remember that the word of God says in Romans 10, 13, whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This day, if you're not sure of your salvation, say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, that's right, say, Lord Jesus, I ask you into my heart and life. I repent of all my sins. And I do believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, and that God raised you from the dead. I give my heart and life to you. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me according to Acts 20 and verse 32, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace that is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are set apart in Jesus Christ. I want to welcome you to the family of God, to the army of the living God, and God bless each and every one of you today. Glory to God. As I close today, I usually close right away, but I want you to lay your hands upon yourself in Jesus' name. We're going to put that uh, number one weapon of our warfare into practice where he said, in the name of Jesus, he's given us delegated authority to use his name. In Jesus' name, as we do, I speak to all weakness, sickness, disease, infirmity, pain, and discomfort in your body. I rebuke it. I rebuke it not only from over you, but over your loved ones and those ones you're standing for. I rebuke all weakness, sickness, disease, infirmity, pain, and discomfort in Jesus' name. And I charge and command it to leave you and yours now and not return in Jesus' name. To that one that's been experiencing respiratory problems, I rebuke every spirit of infirmity to the respiratory system. Charge and command it in, in Jesus' name, and charge it and command it to leave you and yours now, and not return in Jesus' name. Amen. God, again, God bless each and every one of you today.